So if you're into the Law of Attraction, the following book is one that you definitely should pick up at some point in your journey. Now, it's not really gonna give you a lot of practical tips when it comes to the Law of Attraction, but it is gonna give you a lot of personal experiences and just simple wisdoms that you can acquire as you manifest over longer periods of time. And the book that I wanna share with you guys is called The Confessions of an 83-Year-Old Sage. Now, this book is actually pretty cool. Um, it's about Helen Hassel, who is basically the writer of uh, The Name It and Claim It Game, which if you haven't read that book, that was the first book that I would really tell you to read is The Name It and Claim It Game by Helen Hassel. Um, that one really talks about how she's won a lot of different games across the country, whether it's winning a house or winning a trip or winning new appliances. She's done a lot of contests and she's basically figured out like the methodology to perpetually win. So Helen is now dead, but by the time she ended up finishing like writing her books and stuff like that, she was one of the top people that ended up really manifesting the most wins in any contest game on the planet. So she was like the person to go to to try to do these things. And um, her first book is a lot more about the methodology and how she won. This book is more so one of the books that she read, she wrote more towards the end of her life, The 83 Year Old Sage. And this is more so about like some of the wisdoms that she's really carried ac across her life. And she talks about like, you know, you need to understand the power of being glad, being sad, and being mad when you're manifesting anything in particular. And that everything that you're manifesting is essentially happening in a greater ecosystem. And a lot of times when we're manifesting, we think about like, okay, well, you know, I know I'm, I'm manifesting with the cosmos, but you don't really actually think about how detailed that is. And she shares not only her personal experiences, but she shares experiences of other people. And I think one of the best stories that are, are here is Helen, one of Helen's friends, um, he was a priest and he didn't have a lot of money. And he, you know, just knew that he wanted to basically live in this house and record his affirmations and publish his affirmations on the radio because that's what his life path was about. So he kept having like these daydreams and he would focus very intensely on the fact that like I have this house that's got a staircase, it's got a room where I can record and all I do is wake up every morning and I go to the room and I record and I publish and I live there and it's quiet. And he really, really painted the image of this house in his head so vividly that he miraculously ends up manifesting this house. And what's really cool about the story is that one of his listeners had been listening to the priest's like audio that would play on the radio. And she, when she passed away, his audios had changed her life so much that she had left him a house. And when the priest basically goes to check out the house, the house that he's been manifesting literally, quite literally forever, he saw the same exact staircase that he had imagined all this time. He asked the realtor, like, is there a sound recording room on the second floor? And the realtor was like, yeah, how did you know that? Now, the priest and the woman that left him the house did not know each other whatsoever, but he had manifested it so much and so detailed that somebody else who had his manifestation left it behind for him. And one of the things that's really cool about the book is the way that Helen really describes it in this book is that like when you manifest, you basically are talking to other people when you're manifesting. You might be thinking that, yeah, okay, I'm sitting by myself. I'm sitting in my own personal universe. I'm manifesting the things that I'm looking for. I'm putting it out there, putting it out there, putting it out there. But what you don't really recognize is that you're talking to other people because a lot of times the manifestations that you want incorporate other people, right? If you want to grow on social media, you need the participation of other people to help your manifestation come to light, right? You can't like become famous on social media if you're not co cooperating and working with other people with your manifestation because it does require other people so a lot of times when we're manifesting we're actually like not just solidifying it for ourselves and doing subconscious reprogramming but we're actually projecting that idea out into every aspect of the cosmos where other people can hear it and think about it and then eventually give you the things that you want so in this book one of the major things is like using telepathy to basically manifest the things that you're looking for and it's cool because i've done that plenty of times like i've i've now figured out how to manifest celebrities and a lot of my friends that are like you know doing this type of work they they ask me now like help me manifest x person into like my podcast or my work or whatever 
and the methodology is the same like it's just really sitting down in this p position of being in front of those people that you want to talk to it doesn't matter where they're at in the world or how high of a caliber they are if you authentically feel that they can hear you and talk to you across time and space you can manifest that person into your life and it's absolutely beautiful when you think about how that works not just when it comes to manifesting celebrities but also manifesting like important people into your life like soul family a, a lover etc which is like a lot of it has to do with you know your your ability to expand your mind and almost like look beyond what you think is possible because a lot of times when we create we have like these barriers in our mind of like how far we can take a manifestation or like how a manifestation is supposed to work and one of the things that i really like to focus when i work with people is just saying like okay we got to look at the law of attraction as infinity if infinity is the law of attraction and manifestation equals infinity you need to allow every possible scenario to to manifest for you when it comes to manifesting any objective because you might be thinking okay i'm manifesting a lover and i'm only gonna meet my lover on the internet like on tinder or bumble or one of those apps because you're so accustomed to meeting people like that in this age but there are so many other ways that you can meet a person so you still need to be open enough that maybe you expect or have a high likelihood that you're going to meet someone on tinder but there's still very much so a chance that you might go to a cafe and randomly bump into somebody or maybe one of your friends introduces you to someone or maybe you find somebody at work, right? There's, there can be something that happens that brings that person to you and it's not necessarily tender. So one of the things that she's really shared about her experience is kind of like manifesting and working with high level people is just really sharing the fact that you need to be lucid. You need to allow yourself to leave open space for your manifestations to come and like you need to really be clear one of the things that you really really just highlight helen in this book is the power of focus and i think that's one of the things i really really love the, the most is like when you want something when you truly authentically want something like for instance you want to write this book right and you want to publish this book right now what what's something that you need to do you need to be focused on the fact that you're gonna you have to write this book you have to dedicate time to the book to then eventually manifest the book rather it takes you two years or it takes you 24 hours you can do it but you have to be focused on the objective and a lot of times people are like okay well i want the house and i want the perfect lifestyle and i want this and i want that and their energy is so scattered that they're not really staying focused on any one particular thing they might be saying okay well i know i have to write the book because the, the book's going to be the gateway to opening up new things in my reality but when they think about writing the book they start thinking about oh my god oh, like i'm gonna have to find a publisher oh my god i'm gonna have to find somebody who can edit it oh my god and you start thinking about all the negatives of a manifestation instead of just doing it right taking it one step at a time and recognizing that all the pieces are going to come together when it's necessary for those pieces to come together and you know she, helen helen hassel has worked with big names like um jose silva which is one of the people that was really good at like training people on controlling their mind and like different uh, aspects of like mind control and mind perception mind manipulation and she was one of the main people that worked with him so you get like a, a side view as uh, as to not only what how jose was but some of the teachings he he experienced in his private life with helen and all the really big names that she was just blessed to be around and learn from she met a lot of people that had dreamt about her or they just knew that they had known each other from another lifetime and that's that's another crazy story that when i was reading it i'm like i've definitely had those experiences myself where i've been like oh i know this person from another lifetime i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna meet them later on in the road of this lifetime right and it does happen and you kind of like know that you inherently have connections with other people even though you're not fully sure of how you have those connections and in just honoring the fact that you feel so strongly to do something or sometimes you get these synchronicities that come through and they don't have any basis to be backed up but you just have to go with the gut feeling of being with that energy and seeing how things play out like that's a really powerful aspect in any manifestation and helen really does cover it really well in the 83 year old sage um i think it's an absolutely amazing book and if you haven't checked it out you should definitely go ahead and grab yourself a copy like i said it's not going to be 
a lot about the law of attraction as applying it, but more so her stories. And there are times where she rambles, like she'll start off certain chapters where she's like, this is what I had for breakfast, but she is 83 when she's writing this book. And that's just kind of like what older people do around that time. So you have to have a little bit of patience when you're reading the book, but there are absolute gems in here if you're willing to really accept it. And it was actually after I read this book that I, I truly did understand the full meaning of Think and Grow Rich, if you've ever read that book or you're thinking about reading that book, I would highly recommend you read this book first before you dive into Think and Grow Rich. Because I've I've read Think and Grow Rich like, I don't know, probably like 15 times by now. And I've always felt like I'm missing something that's in the book that I haven't been able to pick out, obviously. And after I read this book, that's when I was like, oh, I heard it. I finally was like, oh, this is the thing I've been missing. This is what I need to work on. This is what I need to do, right? So it's a very powerful, experience i think is great for everyone especially because we need more people in today's age that are really like you know they've been doing the work right and helen was 83 when she wrote this book she knew the, how law of attraction worked she wasn't super spiritual she wasn't super scientific she just knew how it worked for her and hearing these kinds of stories without having all the woo woo attached to it but still seeing some of the scientific woo woo that happens to her is eye opening and it's a treasure and i really honestly do think that this book is a it is a gift <laughs> if you know what to look for in general so hopefully this is helpful pick it up let me know what you think if you've read it already put it in the description below um and i'm sending you all the love thank you for being here don't forget to subscribe comment share and i'll catch you in the next episode i love you